Good afternoon again. Uh, we're going to open the hearing on House Bill 145, permitting the audio and video recording of a law enforcement officer while in the course of his or her official duties. And uh, the prime sponsor is Representative Bob Starr. Yes. Welcome back. Hey, thank you, sir. Uh, so this is uh, Mr. Chairman. For the record, once again, Representative Al Baldassau from Rockingham County District 3, uh, which concludes Auburn and London area. Before I get started here, because this is, um, it, you know, with um, what's going on, I notice to my right and to my left I'm being videotaped. I walk in this building, nowhere have I given my authority to be videotaped or wiretapped right here in this committee room or in this building. And I try to read. Chapter 570A under war wiretapping and eavesdropping, there's no authority there for me to be videotaped and wiretapped. But I am officially going to give them my authorization to videotape me in, uh, you know, sound. Okay. Do we Thank you. But the reason I am uh, bring came forward with this bill because a few years back there was an issue in Nashua, which I'm sure many of us are all aware of, because the police came to the door. And they, wired, and they videoed at the front door a conversation with the cop. And then, of course, the videotape was taken because it had derogatory stuff on it, apparently. The same thing in many other cities and towns it's going on. If you take a look and uh, give you an idea in Concord here, there are many issues going on with the Concord police on wiretapping video. If you take a look at Nashua, I'm sorry, New Boston, under the Gerald Bellodin uh, issue. Gerald Bellodin is a case that's been going on for years because he was a contractor. Never been in trouble in his life, but because he felt there was fraud going on in a contract, and I'm not going to go into where or what, he videotaped uh, in a sound his conversation where he was being threatened because he was going forward. You can do a search on him, a Google search, and all the information will come up. And they confiscated his camera and everything else on him being um, threatened. Now, I understand under another law, he should have been protected, but he wasn't. It was taken. There was a case in Weir recently. Uh, the same thing happened. Now, this has costed many thousands and thousands of dollars to fight this here, to try to get their cameras back or to keep them from going to jail under the uh, wiretapping under Chapter 578 uh, to keep them out of jail. With today's technology that's going on with cameras, with videos, if you're out on the beach and you there's a, something going on, you're videotaping your family in this sound on your camera, which we all have, and you catch the police on the side there, they're doing something, or having a conversation, or yelling or screaming at somebody on the beach, you could be held accountable if anyone, you know, with that tape, you could be charged for wiretapping. It's illegal <clears throat> if you catch the police there and it's being used or shown or out to anyone else. The law explicitly gives certain areas, and I'm not going to go through it, on where, who is authorized, like on buses, the police can videotape me, okay? And believe me, this isn't about the police. This is about the right, the freedom to be able to, if you're out and about taping video sound, to not being told you can't. Now, even on my own home, if I, I had a camera in my home, I was threatened. Many times I've gone through some stuff, Try to, somebody tried to blackmail me, and it's all public, it's all, that, you know, that was investigated in my town. But if I put out a camera on my property and I videotaped it, no big deal. But if I had the sound to hear and stuff that who's coming to my door, if you didn't catch him at night on video, then there's a problem because I'm illegally wiretapping. So this bill here, I'm hoping that we're able to protect the interests of the average everyday citizen of New Hampshire to say that you have the right to take me. You have the right right now. I have no ob objection here. Why attacking me right now? Okay, you know what I say. And it's used, believe me. Look at YouTube. Every time I open my mouth, somebody's there with a camera. So I'm asking you to please support this here, which was highly supported by the House, the committee, everything. It's about time we correct this problem in our state. And I'm Thank you, and I have nothing else to be met. A lot more testimony behind me with experience. Thank you, Representative Baltasar. Are there questions? Senator Carson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have a few questions. I hope you have a few minutes, Representative sure Baltasar. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, in looking at the bill um, on line six, um, the first section, the person making the recording shall first give notification of the recording to the officer. How would you recommend that happen? Do you think there should be a statement or 
when should they give the officer the statement prior to the taping or once they start taping? Senator, that's a good question. I'm glad you brought that up because I held that back purposely. Okay, okay waiting because I figured the Senate would uh, probably be concerned with that. I don't support that section of the bill. I did not support the amendment in the House because this is, oh, wait, hey, officer, I'm taping you. That's not right. It's, I, I disagree with that, and I'm hoping the Senate would take that out, that part. Because uh, when you're out recording and you're videotaping their family down, you I, and you catch the police, now you're wrong. If you catch the police doing something wrong, you put catch me doing something wrong. Okay, that's why I disagree with that. Thank you. Yep, yep follow up. Um, you have here for the second one, the person making the recording is personally interacting with the officer or recording the officer in a public area. So, say you and I, we tend to sometimes get a little bit heated in, in discussing issues and say, uh, I mean, say you're a police officer and we're arguing and my husband is over here and he wants to videotape the incident. It seems like this second session section is not going to allow the individual who is taping that altercation to be covered by this legislation. You are correct, I said. Yes. Okay, so... May I, um, Mr. Chairman isn't here, so um, I'm going to follow up with another question. So, um, Can I answer that also? The I mean, what I'm trying to get at is, do you feel that it's appropriate that if I come across an altercation that as a citizen and I want to videotape that, that should I be covered by this legislation? You should be covered by this legislation. I believe that the bill should go back to the original intent, okay, for public officials. Not just police. It wasn't intended just for police officers. Public officials. Because we have a duty, okay, to the people to do things in an ethical way. If, I mean, if, if I got something to hide, naturally I'm going to say, don't take me. Okay? I don't want to be taken. If I'm going to be rude to you right now, I'm going to, don't take me. I have nothing to hide and I stand up what comes out of my mouth. And it should be the same with every other public official. Not just picking on the police. That, should, that was not the intent of this. It was very. Mm -hmm. May I follow up? Certainly. Sure. Fine. The, um, and the third section the act of recording does not interfere with an officer, officer's ability to perform his or her official duties. If you look at both of these cameras, they're probably a good between 10 to 15 feet away from us. So they're filming, but they're not interfering with us and the work that we're doing. Do you think that there should be some sort of a setback in statute so you don't have someone who's like two feet away from a police officer or, or a public official trying to do their duty where you don't have someone, and I apologize to Senator Groen, with a camera right, right. right here in his which, face. Which I agree. There was an incident here in the House uh, last year. With, uh, it's on YouTube. With Gary, Representative Gary uh, Howell. We were holding a redress hearing there, and somebody called. There was a warrant for one of the defendants who was speaking at the redress, and the police showed up. Well, Gary Harper broke out his thing, because they were ready to arrest this guy who were waiting to testify on the hearing. Representative Harper pulled out his camera and started videotaping because we tried to, we tried to talk to the cop and say, listen, let him testify and they'll go. Because, you know, their warrant is, he, 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 it's a minor warrant. When he's done here in the house, he'll go with you or he'll turn him in. Well, the cop got mad. The cop put his hand up, like, get that camera out of my face. you got no business. Because some of the comments that were coming out of the mouth were not right, okay, in that incident. And there was no, the cop had no position in no, what he was doing in the house. He didn't go through the state troopers or security in the house. So to make a long story short, we, we had to stop rather than get in a confrontation with the police here in the, uh, the sheriff's department. Mm -hmm. So that should have never, ever happened in this house. So that's why it's very important that we correct this once and for all because before it's getting blown out of proportion all over the state. People are spending thousands of dollars and really no reason because the technology we have today. Thank you, Representative. Any other questions? Thank you very much. Sorry about that. On, on uh, number two in line eight and nine, the other area that I was uh, struck by is that as long as the recording is um, in a public area. And um, I'm, that also sort of surprised me. So it couldn't be done in the privacy of a, of a home. It, it could. Well, I, actually, I, I don't know if I can 
privacy of the home uh, because there's a fine line there on the privacy of your home because do we want people, I don't know, uh, taping children or taping, having videotapes going on or what? I mean, I would think the way the law is what a sign now, I think it is, that yeah, you're the videotape, you know, you could be videotaped here. I mean, every store you want you being videotaped, and, um, you know, on the crimes and stuff that are going on in the stores. The only problem we have there is that we want the voice, and we're talking in the public place where you have the right to be. Um, I'm not going to touch it at home. In private. That's a private property issue. Well, well, so but, but in, the, in the situation where a public official would come to the door of a private home, it would be on private property. Then I would support, yes. And it seems that this provision would exclude that. Well, no, we, I'm sorry. We don't, yeah, we don't want that to be excluded. We want that to be protected, to be able to do that, to be able to wire in voice and, and video on your uh, property. Uh, I misunderstood the question, I'm sorry. That's a, just for clarification purposes, I have one quick question. You'd be in favor of that, but that's with filming or recording on your own property. Oh, yes. Oh, right. definitely. Right. And wh wherever you have the right to be, in a, you know, and also in the public um, arena, anywhere. But a public official should have nothing to be uh, hidden from. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, honorable members of the committee, uh, I come before you and I'm going to give you the same testimony I gave to the House Criminal Justice Committee. You already have my written testimony, or you should. New Hampshire Constitution, Part 1, Article 8. All power residing originally in and being derived from the people. All the magistrates and officers of government are their substitutes and agents and at all times accountable to them. It doesn't say if only when, but we, police officers, any public official, when we take up that mantle, we are accountable to the public and we have, should have no expectation of privacy in performing our public duties. Now that I think there, that said, um, Representative Coffey has brought up a legitimate carve out. There should be some respect for the privacy of, of other private individuals. She brought up, she's an EMT. And she brought up the situation where she has to protect the, private, the medical privacy of people she's treating. I'm not quite sure how you handle that one. But other than that, there's no rational reason why I shouldn't be able to record uh, the interaction of a police officer and some member of my family in my own home. Or, uh, or the tax collector for that matter. <coughs> or any other public official who enters my property or whom I should have cause to interact with in the public arena. Thank you, Representative. Any questions? Yeah. Senator Lundberg. Mr. Chairman, thank you very much. Representative, are you in support of the amended version or the original version? The original version. Okay, thank you. And I just have a question for you, which is yes, sir. Uh, what I thought I heard, and I want to make sure I heard it correctly. No. Do you favor the ability to record public individuals but not private individuals? I hadn't considered private individuals. Uh, the original bill focused on public individuals and I think that's what I would like to see addressed in this because that's been the real bone of contention is uh, public, recording of public officials in the execution of their duties. And follow up on that, which is, so there are cameras here, and we, all, the three of us, and perhaps the five of us, are used to having cameras on us, and we're somewhat, if not, you know, comfortable or not uncomfortable. It's just part of what we do as public officials. But there are people in this room who have come to testify on an unrelated topic. Presumably, they'll end up in that video or that film. What do we do then? Um, I would, I guess, I'd have to reply, since. Their interest is on another subject. If they felt really uncomfortable, they probably should have left the room because they can see that things are being reported. Uh, <laughs> Which, I mean, of course, limits their participation in the public process. Well, would you agree? It could, uh, but I mean, we're in public. I mean, nobody, nobody should do something in public that they're ashamed of. So, just to be clear, again, yeah. I want to make so your private individuals who are in public are fair game. I think so, especially in a, in a public arena. Oh, thank you. Other questions? Thank you. 
public proceedings. Okay. Uh, I have Representative Ward. Association, and I would like to read it into the record. New Hampshire Association of Chiefs of Police respectfully opposes HB 145. The bill, <coughs> as currently written, allows individuals to audio and videotape police officers during their course of duties. In police work, the job consists of many confidential areas such as juvenile involvement, mental health issues, dealing with victims of crime, as well as public safety issues. Our concern is for the privacy of the individual needing police assistance be able to report serious but delicate crimes without being subjected to audio and videotape. Police officers are concerned that during the course of their duties, they often must deal with volatile and potentially deadly situations. Having someone audio and videotaping could potentially make the situation worse for the individuals in the office. Without being able to concentrate on the situation at hand and having to worry about others coming to the area, as a distraction that could possibly harm the individuals they encounter. The final concern is about what happens to the recording that is, that is made. Under this bill, there is no mechanism in place to ensure the integrity of the tape. It can be altered, forwarded, sent to YouTube, or sent to any other social networking site. This could potentially harm due process. In current practice, if a recording is made by a law enforcement officer, it is preserved through a chain of evidence to protect the continuity of the case. In closing, we ask that you find this bill inexpedient to legislate. Thank you, Chief. Question, Senator Carson. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Um, I, I find some of your comments a little interesting because I think we've all seen the reality TV shows where you've got a camera mounted uh, on the dashboard of the police car and you've got individuals and whoever happens to be caught up into that situation they're being videotaped and they're being, their voices are being recorded. Why is it then appropriate for the police to do that? And then again, these things end up out on public television and that's okay, but if an individual wants to film somebody getting arrested, all of a sudden it becomes an issue of due process and we're talking about chains of evidence. Well, first of all, for the police to do it, the, the exception was already carved out in the statute for place to be able to, to use the, mm -hmm. the assistance of audio and videotaping. Um, my concern individually is that this sometimes can be used by people who will create situations in order to, for the police to examine it. In other words, they may create and break the law in order to have a confrontation with the police and then have a recording. And that's some of the unintended consequences that could come out of legislation like this. Thank you. Other questions for Chief Chico? Seeing none, thank you, Chief. I'm just going to go down the list. Uh, William Kostrick, uh, and I apologize if I mispronounced that. No problem, you got it perfect. Welcome. Thank you. Can you just state your name for the record? Uh, right? My name is William Costrick, and um, <clears throat> I'm going to actually deviate uh, from what I have and start with addressing uh, what we just heard. It seems to me that um, they uh, not only failed to read the law, uh, the police in general, as it currently stands, but apparently even failed to read the bill um, and are just making uh, general statements and throwing red herrings out there. As the bill is currently written, not, not this bill, the law, okay, we can already record them. We can already record in public. There is no reasonable expectation of privacy in public. You cannot record someone if they have a reasonable expectation of privacy, and that reasonable expectation of privacy must be justified. It's clearly not when they're on the job and when they're on public. 
So we don't really need this bill. <clears throat> the purpose of this bill, in my opinion, okay, because we are going to continue recording them. We are going to continue winning. There are states where they've passed statutes that say exactly the opposite. You may not record police. Those laws are being challenged, and they are going to lose. Okay. What's happening right now is there are lawsuits being filed against several police stations around the state. So in my opinion, the purpose of this modification is to inform the police what they may not do, which is arrest someone for videotaping in public, and thereby save the taxpayers money. Because we already can, we already do, we're going to continue to do it, and they're going to get sued every time they arrest us. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Koster. I, I just have a clarification. You signed up speaking opposed, but I, I'm I, assuming I, you support. I, I oppose as amended. These amendments are, uh, are mostly atrocious. Uh, the, uh, the first one here mentions um, video recording of a, a law enforcement officer specifically. I believe it's already been said that should be all public officials. And um, that's just, again, that's already the case. Um, as far as notification goes, uh, there's problems there. Uh, people have uh, security systems, which also record audio. There's no one there to give notification. Besides, why should someone get notification so they can change their obviously bad behavior and start looking good on camera? They should comport themselves in a respectful manner all the time. Um, uh, the act of recording does not interfere. Well, it's already illegal to interfere. So uh, that's completely unnecessary. That's, uh, and, and again, saying that Oh, if people can videotape, then they can interfere. They can do all of these other things which are illegal under other statutes. That's like saying uh, if we grant someone a driver's license, they can start driving through people's front yards and running over children because they have a driver's license. No, that's not what it means. Just because, you have a, uh, just because they can't arrest someone and charge them with wiretapping does not mean that those people can violate any other laws. They can't, they can't interfere in due process. They can't interfere with an investigation. They can't trespass. They can't harass people. All of those laws stand on their own. Thank you, Mr. Cosby, for any questions. See you. Appreciate your testimony. Thank you. Uh, Claire Evil. Mr. Chair, members of the committee, my name is Claire Evil. I'm the executive director of the New Hampshire Civil Liberties Union. And to the surprise of no one, I have a few Swiftian suggestions about amending the bill. Um, I would first like it. Can I interrupt one yes, sir. Ms. Evil has just asked, amend the bill as, amend, as amended? Or amend the amended bill. That's what we're looking at. Yes, okay. sir. I, I, don't even, I don't even bring a copy of the original bill. I, I just wanted that's, to make sure we were on the same page. That's, that's oceans of water all over the bill. <coughs> um, I would like, first of all, to state that it is my belief that this bill protects police officers because very often the allegations that are made against cops are not valid. They are made by people who are angry because they've been arrested, because the police found them doing something they should not have been doing. And so I don't see this as an anti-police bill at all. But I think the way the amendment is, the, the way the amended bill is structured is, um, is turns the law on its head. Um, the first piece is on line four, the words or video ought to be struck. There is no prohibition in law. This is the wiretap statute. It is the audio recording that is at issue here. Video recording is permitted. There is no prohibition anywhere in statute of which I am aware about video recording. The problem has arisen because so many of the video recorders now have an audio component that people either cannot or do not shut off. And that's where the, the problems begin to happen. I would suggest that the order of the three issues, one, two, and three, be reversed. That on line 10, that that become section number one. The act of recording does not interfere with the officer's ability to perform his or her official duties, semicolon, and number two, which is now beginning on line six. The person making the recording shall first give notification of the recording of the officer if Continuing on line eight, the person making the recording is personally interacting with the officer, semicolon, or three, the person making the recording is recording the officer in a public place. And I actually wrote it out so that Susan 
doesn't have to stand on her head because I know she works harder than any human on the planet. I appreciate that, Susan. Appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> I feel that way. And I just want to can make sure that I catch the last suggestion that you made because it's a new provision. No, sir. It's it's basically Roman th uh, paren three now becomes paren one. Yep. Paren one now becomes paren two and continues through half of two. And then three becomes the remainder of two. Basically, the wording is added, the person making the recording, and then it continues with line nine, is recording the officer in a public place. Got it. So yeah. basically, the, the implication is that you cannot interfere, that you notify if, it's a, if it is a personal interaction, but that you, there is no requirement to notify if the, the recording is being done in a public place. Thank you very much. Other questions for this evening? Seeing none, thank you very much. Thank you so much. Attorney General, <laughs> not the Attorney General Rice, did you? Uh, if I may. Yep. My name is Ann Rice. I'm the Associate Attorney General. I'm here on behalf of the Attorney General's Office. Uh, I was not planning to testify on this bill. We took a position in the House in opposition to it. Uh, changes were made in the House that we felt we could live with. I think it's important for this committee to understand what those changes were. Um, when the, the original bill talked about uh, uh, recording all public officials, uh, which we objected to, um, but we also, our concerns were the language about being able to um, tape record people in their, when they're acting in their public capacity. We all act in our public capacity in places that are not in public areas. For instance, I do a lot of stuff in my office. Um, we were very concerned that language that was very broad of just having the right to record needed to clarify that it did not give a person the right to expect to go into someone's private office and be able to record an interaction, which is the reason for the language that was uh, included in uh, uh, small two on lines eight and nine. I think to, to um, respond to Senator Carson, your question about allowing <coughs> other people to tape an interaction between you and someone else, I think this language would allow that as long as it's in a public place. And this is in a public place. So that's why these cameras are allowed. I think that the rules actually specifically allow for recording uh, in these buildings. Um, the, uh, we also wanted to include the issue of notification um, because I think that that came out of the issue with notification when law enforcement is tape recording someone during a motor vehicle stop, when they're having that one-on-one -on -one conversation. I think Claire Evil's suggestion is a very good one. Uh, to make that notification, if, that's, if, if you are with, wanting to pass this bill, to make the notification limited to um, when you're having an interaction with someone. I think that makes some sense. Um, and the act of recording does not interfere with an officer's ability to perform his or her duties. This came out of concerns with some um, circumstances, particularly in Keene, you may remember that there was an, uh, some public demonstrations for a while. Um, and there were officers who were trying to make arrests and people were tape recording, really getting right into the situation, you know, within feet. And it was really interfering the off officer's duties to be able to conduct, uh, to execute an arrest. So that was the language uh, and the reason for putting in number three. So. These were things that we did talk about. Um, the House thought that some restrictions were reasonable in this case. Um, so I just wanted to explain that to you. And um, I'm happy to answer any questions about the law if you have any. Thank you, Attorney Rice. And I'm assuming, just for the purpose of my record keeping, that your, your office isn't taking a position on the bill. It's just on the uh, clarifications that you were That's seeking. Correct. Thank you. Other questions for Attorney Rice? Thank you, Mr. Chairman, honorable members of the committee. My name is Dennis Goddard. 
and I am speaking on behalf of the New Hampshire Liberty Alliance, which strongly supports the original bill and the intent and the spirit of the bill, um, and has some concerns with the bill as amended by the House. Um, I'll, I'll just say that uh, in watching the House action, I think what happened in the House was the House was willing and happy to take half a loaf rather than the original intent, which I can really understand. I first started this process of, I first descended down this slope of addiction known as getting involved in the New Hampshire political process almost 10 years ago. I'm sure you've all been through this process. And one of the first bills that I, uh, you know, that came across my radar had to do with this very issue. And it's nearly 10 years ago now. And it had to do with an individual, somehow audio recording, in this case a police officer, and suffering chilling ramifications as a result, having to defend himself with felony charges. And it's very often that these felony charges get, get brought up and then eventually get dropped. They don't actually get adjudicated. Over the course of these last few years, unfortunately, New Hampshire is starting to acquire a reputation as being one of a small number of states, along with places like Tennessee and New York, that is got a chilling effect on free speech, on citizen journalists, where a large number of news stories come out of New Hampshire on this very same issue. I did a quick Google search this morning, and uh, you know I got the 1.4 million hits, I'm sure, that weren't all exactly related. Um, in my written testimony, I'll give you just a few from the last few months. But the number of these issues coming specifically out of New Hampshire is alarming. And I'm really hoping that whatever happens with the specific language of this bill, that you can take this opportunity to give us something that will in some way remove the chilling effect that currently exists on citizens. You know, I'm, I'm hearing the concerns about public officials doing some things that really do need to remain confidential when they're working in their office, you know, human resources sorts of, sorts of issues. And I'm looking for the demonstrated need here. And yes, I, I know there were weird protests in Keene, but I'm not, I'm not seeing a significant problem in the state with police being unable to do their jobs because of all of the cases of, of people reporting them. I am seeing a demonstrated need with lots and lots of cases where people who have no idea they're breaking the law realize later when they're faced with felony wiretapping charges then they realize that they were breaking the law. Um, please restore the original language or something close to it. I'm always, nearly always, willing to take whatever clear evil is willing to give as amendments because they're typically very well researched. And the last thing I want to leave you with, I don't want to go into too much detail with this because it's rather horrific, but I want to give you some idea of the level of emotion that motivates some of these people to come here before you today. Fortunately, this didn't happen in New Hampshire, thank God. There was a case a few years ago, a, a gentleman named Eugene Seiler. I say gentleman loosely. Um, <clears throat> he is illiterate and allegedly a small-time drug dealer. But when the police came to his house without a warrant, Mr. Seiler asked them to leave. They didn't. And at that point, Mr. Seiler had the presence of mind to surreptitiously start a tape recorder that recorded the torture that he was subjected to with the police officers in question trying to get him to sign a waiver, to sign a form allowing them to search his property. By torture, I mean he was beaten up, beaten with slapjacks, electrocuted in sensitive parts of his body. I will have for you the Federal Bureau of Investigation report and transcript of pieces of that recording. It's horrific. And in our state, Mr. Seiler could look forward to being charged as a felon for starting that tape recorder. And I don't think any of us would agree that's the appropriate action on behalf of law enforcement. Law enforcement. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Governor. Any questions? I see none. Uh, I saw Hans Zibble, but I believe. Is he still here? Did he? No, he didn't see that. Do you want to see if he's in the hall? hall Okay, 
I have, I'm just going to make a note for the record that I have uh, six folks signed up to speak, all in support. I'm going to call everybody, obviously, but I would just ask that we only uh, please provide the committee with new evidence that would support, or new testimony that would support the position. Thank you very much, and I'll call uh, Seth Pipple. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. My name is Attorney Seth Hipple. I'm from Concord. Um, you may have read the union leader about the cases in which I've represented uh, various defendants on uh, charge with felonies under uh, the wiretapping law 570A. Um, they were all charged with felonies for openly, non surreptitiously recording police activity in public while those officers were on duty performing their public duties. Uh, you may have also read that my firm recently filed a federal lawsuit against the town of Ware for the arrest of one of those clients. Therefore, as you can imagine, um, I've spent a lot of time looking at this law and I have a lot of interest in the outcome of this, uh, this bill. I'll cover three things in my brief testimony. One, <clears throat> why I don't believe passing this bill would actually change the law. Two, why I think the bill is still necessary. And three, why I think it's necessary but not in this form. I am supporting the original language but not the original. Noted. Thank you. First, the law of the land already allows people to record in public. Yes, even with audio. Uh, the First Amendment protects the right to openly record police because obviously what they do is extremely important to the public good. Uh, various federal courts have already upheld this. Um, the First Circuit, the First Circuit Court of Appeals, um, which has jurisdiction over New Hampshire, um, ruled in a case uh, which is noted in the written testimony and cited um, said that the, the right to record uh, video and audio of public officials in public was sufficiently clear, clearly protected in the First Amendment. Um, I also cite cases from the 11th Circuit and from the 9th Circuit, also dealing with uh, one of, two of those cases dealing specifically with the audio recording of police officers, one of them dealing with the audio and video recording of, um, of public officials who were not police officers. In all of those cases, the court said, no, the First Amendment clearly protects this uh, it cannot be criminalized. Now, furthermore, the statute itself does not criminalize people reporting police in public. The reason that there's confusion about this is because the statute uh, was written piecemeal, uh, so it's, it's, not, it's not very clear, and it was also written at a time before we had these handheld reporting devices. If you read the, the first part of the statute, it says that um, you can't make a recording, or you can't record oral communication without that party's consent. It seems pretty clear. Okay, well, if you don't have consent, then it's wiretapping. The problem is, is that if you look at the definition of oral communication, and that is RSA 570A1, Roman numeral 2, I'll read it to you. Oral communication means any oral communication uttered by a person exhibiting an expectation, this is the important part, that such communication is not subject to interception under circumstances justifying such expectation. That's pretty much uh, word for word from the federal law. Now, there's a ton of federal jurisprudence on what's known as the reasonable expectation of privacy, which is exactly what, what I just read to you. And that's where it cases of saying, okay, people, if they're on the sidewalk, they don't have a reasonable expectation of privacy. And, you know, there's, there's a whole bunch of, of cases. It's very clear that police, not only people in public, but even clear that police officers or other public officials don't have a reasonable expectation of privacy in the way that they perform their duties. In fact, they're accountable to the people. So I don't believe that this law actually that the law currently actually criminalizes the activity that we're talking about. This may be why no one has ever been convicted that I'm aware of in New Hampshire of these charges. So if it's not illegal, why am I here supporting the bill? <coughs> well, there's a major problem in New Hampshire. Right now, I've represented, as I said, two defendants just in the last 12 months alone, charged with felonies. Um, I'll note for the record that I don't, I don't work for free. Uh, so these people are obviously having to drain their personal bank accounts. They're obviously going through a lot of stress. Um, and usually what happens is the cameras are seized when they're arrested, the video, the video footage is, is erased, and if they're lucky, they might have their camera uh, returned. I have been dealing, um, one of my clients was arrested 13 months ago, and her camera has still not been returned. The charges were dropped, I believe, 11 months ago, and she has still not had her camera returned despite two court orders. That's the problem, is that despite the, the law being clear, People are still, there's still, officers will still tell people, you can't record me unless I give you my consent. And a person who doesn't have the wherewithal or the means to hire an attorney, 
uh, God forbid, I, this may have happened already, but I don't know that. I hope it hasn't. But it could happen in the future that they take a plea deal. They're scared to death and they say, oh my goodness, I'm going to be a felon. Okay, I'll, I'll take a, a, a plea deal and a, you know, a small fine and a misdemeanor to make this go away. When they didn't even break the law in the first place. So this is happening a lot, and it's a pattern. That's why I still think the statute is necessary. Now, why? Now the question becomes, how, how should we make this change? I have a problem with the current, the current language. You can note that the current language would have made the Rodney King recordings illegal. I think that's a problem. Now, another, another situation that I came up with um, was, uh, imagine a WMUR reporter with a 10-foot um, boom microphone recording, uh, say, let's say, firefighters putting out a fire, and the reporter, in order to stay out of the way of firefighters, <coughs> is standing on YMCA property, private property, right? He would fail almost every single one of those, those provisos that are now in the bill from the House Amended Version because he's recording firefighters, not police officers. He didn't get their explicit permission. You know, he's not going to go up to all 15 firefighters while they're fighting a fire and say, hey, can I, can I record you? What's going on? No, he's not going to do that. But they don't have a reasonable expectation of privacy. He has that 10-foot boom microphone, which is why common sense tells you it's not against, it shouldn't be against the law. Um, and then on top of it, um, he's standing on YMCA property, not public property. So these three provisos could actually hang him. You could actually, you could actually criminalize something that actually isn't criminalized right now. Because what you would do is you would say, um, you know, right now it's not illegal, but then the police are going to say, well, we have, we have the law, we have what's legal, so that means everything else must be illegal. And I have a, I have a problem with that. Um, I, I think simpler is better. Um, it may shock you to hear an attorney say that, but I think that uh, I think that the change to this would be really simple. Because, like I said, I think the law already covers what the, this committee and what, what the, the purpose of this bill. If you look on the very last page, the definition of oral communication, which I already read to you, um, you see there in bold and italicized. I just added a sentence, and this is not actually changing the law; it's simply clarifying the law so that people can stop getting arrested. Public employees do not have a reasonable expectation of privacy while we're performing their public duties. Now, we all know that already. I'm sure that every reasonable person in this room already agrees that that's true. I'm just saying, state what's already, what we already believe, put it in the law, and we can stop these arrests. Thank you. Uh, I have a question for you. What was your response to Tony Rice's comment about the concern about her serving her public function in her private or in her office? Um, would that, wouldn't that exclude any privacy from that locale? Well, there would be, there would be, um, I, I, I was curious whether she was talking about, like, say, interviewing a defendant. If she was interviewing a defendant in her private office, this change that I'm suggesting would not, um, would not make the recording of that legal because that defendant would not be a public official. So his voice would not be allowed to be recorded. Um, if we wanted to say that public employees do not have reasonable expectation of privacy while performing their public duties in public, I think that would uh, also be acceptable. Um, what I don't want to do is actually create um, a list of scenarios that are illegal, where, which is what this bill does, where it says, okay, you have to get their consent. And now I'm left to litigate with my clients. Well, did he get her consent with their explicit consent? Does it have to be explicit? Oh, he was in a public area. Well, does that include my front yard because it's right by the street? Or does it have to be the sidewalk? You know, these, are the, these, are, these are the lawyers' playgrounds that I don't want to see pe innocent people getting caught up in. Thank you very much. Other, qu other questions? See you. No, thank you very much. Thank you. You have that many more pages. <laughs> <laughs> and the pen is running out of ink. Oh. Um, okay, uh, Carla, and I apologize if I mispronounced it. Great. Great. Close enough. Great. Welcome. Okay, thank you. Um, for the record, my name is Carla Garrett. And I will be audio recording this. Put you on notice. So am I. Good. Or maybe I'm not. I if it doesn't work, yes. you do have an online version that's being taped, so you can catch it that way. Great, thank you. Um, I am uh, the program director for the New Hampshire Writers Project. Um, I was arrested in March 2010 in the incident in Weir. Um, I'd never been in trouble with the law before. I, in fact, was a lawyer in California for many years before I moved to the East Coast. Um, so you can imagine my surprise when I got arrested and I got charged with a seven-year felony for reporting a police officer in public. 
Um, I'll be as brief as I can about the facts, but I think some of it is quite salient. Uh, I was charged, I was taken to court, I wanted my day in court. Uh, when we got to court, the charges were dropped. We filed a motion because I think this is an important issue that the jurisprudence should have decided on instead of the situation where we're now here and we're trying to write something for the reason, quite frankly, because the police are abusing the wiretapping statute. There is no reason, if you're in public and the police officer is executing these duties, that you as a citizen of the state of New Hampshire shouldn't be able to record the police officer. They do it to us, we should be able to do it to them. Um, I also think it's a disturbing trend, as some of the other people here have testified, that we are seeing in America. There is a sort of idea that, oh, we have this surveillance state that's starting, and you know, traffic lights, cameras, all of that. And if we want to move in that direction, that's fine, but then the playing field should be equal between the parties who are interacting. In my case, why I feel so strongly about this, um, we subpoenaed all the records, the cameras, dash cams, mics, the police um, cameras in the police office and the holding cell where they locked me up for three hours to a hold and tighten my handcuff. And I mean, it was a really horrible experience. Um, when we subpoenaed that, they were claiming none of those records exist. And they took my camera. They've had it for 14 months. I don't have my footage. There's nothing I can do to exonerate myself. They dropped the charges, but they won't give my stuff back. And they keep saying, well, you know, we might come back. We might charge you at some later stage. And this is obviously something that has a lot of, um, has had a really adverse personal effect on me, my job. It's costing me a lot of money. It costs me time to come here every you know, few months. Um, there is no expectation of privacy if you're on the job, if you're on the record. Um, legal fees. Um, I did take a look at the language. I agree with most of the people here who have testified the original house bill was a much better uh, solution. I do think Attorney Hipple's suggestion was quite elegant to just put an exception in the Wiretapping Act. That is something, um, one of the exceptions, the reason why police officers are allowed to record us is because I think it's the last sentence in that act they put in an exception and it said police officers with their dash cams and their mics are allowed to record people. So I think the best way to look at this is just an issue of leveling the playing field. What's fair for them, you know, what's fair for the beast is fair for the gander. I, I have no recourse in the situation and I really um, strongly ask you guys to, senators, to, um, <laughs> to, um, to consider what's happened here today and I think the best solution would be to just amend the wiretapping and probably throw the in public on the last sentence of the um, uh, proposal submitted by my attorney. I, that's what I have to say. I don't know if you have any questions for me. Thank you very much, Ms. Garrett. I appreciate it. Are there any questions for Ms. Garrett? Seeing none, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Representative Wayne, I'm sorry, I didn't know if I could see your name uh, until right now. No problem. Mr. Chairman, thank you for the opportunity to speak. Um, the first time I came to speak on this particular topic, I was not a representative, nor had I demonstrated virtually any interest in politics. It was um, a friend of mine called me up, and she said her uh, her son was Asperger's. She was driving down the road, had an interaction with a police officer. The tape recorder that he carried with him on a regular basis was sitting in the car. Police officer looked at it and said, "Are you recording this?" And he said, "No, but I am now." And he reached over and he pressed the record button. He instantly did. They charged him with felony wiretapping. That happened in Ashland. And because of that, when she told me that, I was stunned. It's in the live free or die state that our police would do that. My research into this topic was one of the scariest things that I've ever read. Across the country, well-intentioned legislators like ourselves implemented laws that were based on the idea that citizens should be protected from the police. When these laws were constructed in the 50s, there was no idea that an individual citizen would have the wealth 
or the resources to carry around a recorder, because these things were incredibly expensive. The police in the 40s and 50s would record citizens without warrants or any other due process of law. The original law was constructed to protect those citizens. Under the way the law reads today, police, as advised by their police unions, have been, and there are articles suggesting to police officers that if you are ever involved in a situation where there's recording, as soon as you charge an individual with a felony, you get to take that recording and evidence, and that evidence cannot be used against you while it is being held as a potential uh, source of evidence in a further criminal trial. I find it interesting that the previous witness said, I still have my camera back and we might charge you. It appears these people can read their own newspapers. It's really scary in this state that we have citizens who can, merely using their cell phone that they carry with them, be charged for using it. There's a case in this state where somebody called telephone number from their cell phone in their car. And while they were on voicemail, got arrested because they left a voicemail. Is that really what was intended by this legislation? I don't believe it was. I submitted the amendment to the House bill that said, if we simply say that police officers, while doing their job, have no expectation of privacy, we protect our citizens from potential abuse. I believe that is our fundamental job. And if you could make that change, I would, and my fellow citizens would be most grateful. If, however, the best you can do is pass the legislation as it sits before you, it is a substantial improvement in protecting the rights of our citizens, which is why we're here. I appreciate anything you can do to assist us. Thank you. Thank you, Representative. Are there questions from Representative Lundgren? Seeing none, thank you very much. Uh, and I move, apologize ahead of time, if I mispronounce this, John Lundgren. John Lundgren. Um, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. Um, my name is John Lewicki. I live in Mason. And I also am in favor of the earlier bill, which I haven't actually read, but the idea that it should be there. And one of the things I'd like to speak about is uh, Article 15 of our Bill of Rights. Article 15 of the Bill of Rights says, every subject shall have a right to produce all proofs that may be favorable to himself, to meet the witnesses against him face to face, and to be heard fully in his defense. If one is to be able to produce the proofs of one's um, innocence, one obviously has to be able to create them in the first place. If one cannot record an interaction with a public official where one may be accused of a crime, then it's very obvious that one has been deprived. And that, you know, we are, by uh, using the intimidation of this wiretap law, we are depriving our citizens of their rights to record and to have the proofs that they have recorded to use in their own defense in court. Um, you know, I'm, for way too long, we've had institutions that have operated in the dark. Uh, the clergy uh, sex abuse scandal, which continues to this day in this state. Or people who thought, oh, well, no, nobody's ever going to find out. We can always intimidate, we can uh, do so. And the police have, to a great extent, done the same thing. We are going to threaten people with felonies if they just simply provide for their own defense. And I think that, uh, honestly, the law as it exists is null and void just based upon Article 15 of our Constitution. That's all I have to say. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Brandon Ross. Thank you, members of the committee. <coughs> Mr. Ross. Thank you. My name is Brandon Ross. I'm Lynn Conker. I'm an attorney and I work in Manchester. Uh, I've defended individuals on these wiretapping charges before, and I've never seen anybody do that. In fact, as far as I know, nobody ever has. Um, I'm actually here to support the bill as it came from the House, not the amended version, and since a lot's been said, and I think, as many people have said, there's no, <coughs> no substantial question of whether you can constitutionally take the court uh, law, enforcement, law enforcement officers within the Republic. I'd just like to talk about why the amended version is dangerous. 
if you pass, if the amended version becomes law, more people will sit in jail. They will not be convicted of a crime. They'll be arrested, they'll be booked, they'll be inconvenienced, they may suffer some kind of job repercussions. But in the end, their charges will, will be dismissed, at least if current practices continues the way it has. Um, and, the reason, and the reason why I'd like to look at the uh, amended statute, it creates a new three-pronged test. And if we can actually look at the amended version, before you can record them, you have to satisfy all of them. I think some people have suggested that only one would apply. It is an and. You see it on line nine. That is how a judge will interpret this. Before you can record them without committing a felony, you must tell them, you must notify them that they're being recorded. And you must be personally interacting with them. Or they must be in a public area. And you must not be interfering with their um, official duties. And so if you miss one of those, for example, you just randomly forget to notify, maybe because you're just a citizen and you don't know your rights and you're nervous. You are now guilty, or you can now be charged with felony. Um, and what I suggest is that these three elements of, of, of this test are just create legalistic weasel phrases to give officers more discretion. If we look at the first one, it wants you to notify the police. Well, how should you do that, and, and when? Uh, I believe Senator Carter <coughs> pointed out that the Rodney King videos, uh, under this law, would, would actually have been uh, illegal, and they never would have been allowed in court, not in criminal proceedings or any subsequent civil proceedings for uh, uh, the actual man who was uh, injured. And uh, I believe another person talked about um, accidental recordings. Uh, if a news agency was recording, technically they're committing a, a felony. Uh, there is a case that it did involve a person uh, who was speaking on his phone and, uh, because the officer, in his discretion, which is very wide, suggested that that was recording, that the voicemail was recorded, he was charged with a felony. And, and so this, this just becomes, uh, this opens up the discretion immensely. And if we look at the self, second element, to be, personal inter to be personally interacting with the officer, well that raises a question of, bet to the third, how, how can you be personally interacting with the officer without interfering with his duties. Many officers will actually approach people with cameras and say, you can't record here, and the person won't respond. And so the officer will press the issue. Is the person now interfering? I don't know, but, it, but an officer will say, yes. Actually, I do know, no, that's not true. Um, the, the law on interfering with the police officer is well established, and that's not it. Uh, if we actually look at the third element here, we can see uh, interfering with the official duties. Um, people have suggested that if you were to, or, I'm sorry, if you were to record a police officer, that it would interfere with their time, or that um, it, I believe uh, the attorney general suggested that if it were in her office, that that could be a problem. Uh, well, that raises more areas of discretion. And as far as the Attorney General's pointed out that um, it should be illegal for someone to record in that private, what she called a private area, well, that's not exactly necessary because we already have criminal trespassing statutes which would prohibit somebody from barging in there and, and just recording whatever they want. There are a lot of other criminal statutes on the books that protect against some of the things that various people the people who are, uh, say that we don't need this, um, they, they, they are supportive. Um, so my, my point is there, this amendment, this amended version, only, only affects wiretapping and oral communications. There really aren't any reasons for uh, law enforcement purposes to prohibit it. Um, sorry, if you have any more questions. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Ross. Other questions? Seeing thank you very much. Thank you, Chairman. Um, most of what I was going to say has already been covered, as you can tell, a lot of people have spoken. Um, I, I want to know that, for the record, though, I do support the original version of the bill, um, HB 145, or perhaps even Seth Hipple's. Um, Tardy said Hipple's version, that would be good too. But just a few tidbits. <clears throat> um, the union leader put out an editorial 
February 27th on this very issue. And um, they were just talking about the original bill before it was amended, but they did have a problem. Um, they said the big flaw was that it takes effect on January 1st of next year. So that was their issue. And why would they say that? Well, because it's a national issue. Um, John Stossel, he's a columnist for the Union Leader also, and he also has a TV show. And um, typically his TV show, and in this case it did, is the same as his column. It talks about the same issue. So in April, he talked about this issue in the Union Leader. And basically, he has talked about an Indian leader. Um, USA Today has done an editorial in the last few months on this issue, of course, coming out in favor of the ability to record the police, which has been pointed out is already currently legal in New Hampshire. It's just unfortunate that some police officers um, are confused on the law, perhaps. I don't know. They, all, they drop the charges eventually. But that just seems to be an issue. So let's see. In response to the Union Leader column, by John Stossel, um, one of the comments by um, Joel Winters of Manchester, he said, let's see, it says that in order to be exempt from a felony wiretapping charge, you must comply with three requirements where it should clarify the underlying law. So that's the main problem of this, as people have brought up. Um, that's great if you happen to comply with those three requirements. But putting this on the books implies that if you don't, you should be charged with felony wiretapping for audio recording in public. So this law criminalizes something that's already illegal. And I'd also like to um, just throw out the First Amendment to the United States Constitution. Just throw that out there. Um, this seems to limit that um, in a way that it was never intended to. Um, as some people have mentioned the press. This basically, this law is, I don't know if it's designed to limit the press the way it was amended or not, but I would recommend just reading that before you um, vote on this issue or vote to amend it. Thank you very much, Mr. Thank Russell. Any questions for Mr. Yeah. Seeing none, we appreciate your testimony. Seeing no one else signed up to speak on House Bill 145, I'm going to close the hearing. Thank you very much. Mr. Chairman, you please take a three-minute break. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I saw people in the audience complaining that they weren't comfortable having to sit so long. I sympathize. <laughs> I want to go get a note 